So here in Australia, back in the 80s, if you weren't so great academically at school, and your parents couldn't afford to send you to a boarding school, and you were really badly behaved, well, some parents would send you off to work on stations out in the middle of nowhere in the middle of Australia. And well, some of them never returned. G'day everybody and welcome back to the Gulag. My name is Ryan and here we tell true crime to come out of Australia. Now join us today as we're going into campfire stories that will send shivers down your spine. Now also please before we begin the stories please smash that like button as it really helps the algorithm if you enjoy these style of stories told in story format. All right so without further ado let's get stuck into the story. It was the summer of 1986 when two teenage boys, James Annett, age 16, and Simon Amos, who was age 17, decided to take a job at a remote cattle station in the Kimberley region of Australia. Now this was heavily enforced by their parents, for them to hopefully pull into line, to stop being so lazy, and to stop relying on their parents so much. Now, born and raised in the city of Adelaide, they were very unprepared for the harsh conditions and the grueling work that awaited them. Now, their parents knew this, but many parents in the local area were raving on about how much their teenage boys had changed so much over the Christmas holidays with this new farming program that was advertised in the paper, teaching them how to cook, hunt, work hard, and be around masculine energy. It was perfect for single mums who needed a hand pushing their sons into line. Now their days consisted of checking bores and also checking the windmills. And this included long dusty road trips that stretched for 12 hours round trip. The heat was unbearable and there was no aircon. And the boys often complained about their living conditions. The accommodation was primitive at best, with raw sewage bubbling up through the shower floor, not to mention any time they complained, the farmhands and the labourers were relentless with banter and harassing them with pranks to make them feel more at home. Now over only a few short weeks, which felt like months for these two boys, they had had enough. The constant banter, the heat, the long hours and the fact that back in the 80s guys, there was no mobile phones. The only source of entertainment these two boys found was sneaking some alcohol out of the eating hall and hiding out near the windmills for a good drink and a laugh. But after a while, it wore the farmhands and the laborers down as they were always slacking off. And they started to become hostile and aggressive towards the boys. And on a few occasions, one particular farmhand told the boys, be careful lads, it's really easy to go missing out here. Things out here operate a lot differently to what you're used to. You'll go missing and you'll be lucky to have a patrol car look for you for more than one day. Now frustrated and desperate to escape, James and Simon made a rash decision. They stole a Datsun from the property owner and set off into the unforgiving outback. Now immediately, as soon as the farm owner knew about this, he contacted the authorities as he knew they only had one tank of petrol and it wouldn't even get them halfway off the station. So a three day search was conducted to find them, but they had seemed to be vanished without a trace. They couldn't even find the tire marks that they could have possibly let off the property with. Now they conducted a search that stretched over a 150 kilometer radius more than what the tank of fuel could possibly get them out of. Now, with all of this search, after five days of searching relentlessly through the harsh, unforgiving outback, not to mention that visibility was poor because of the heat waves coming off the rocks, well, they had to call off the search. So four months later, with no sign of these two boys, a farmer was clearing some foliage on his property near a place called Horse Creek, when he saw an abandoned Datsun on the side of the road parked off underneath a tree. They have put an SOS sign on top of the roof and branches displaying a pointing symbol towards the Datsun. Now, according to the parents of the boys, 
they said this was quite out of character as she was sure her son didn't even know what SOS stand for. But as the police officers closed in and searched around the immediate area, a tragic discovery was made. James, who was only 16, was found dead on the side of the road with a bullet hole to his cranium. And this was discovered 18 kilometers from the location of the Datsun. Now, just by the side of his body, a grim tale started to unfold and this quickly turned into a homicide. Now, one kilometer from his body, they also found Simon, except Simon was curled in the fetal position with blood on his hat clenching a water bottle. Now this five liter water bottle had a note etched on top of the lid, which read, James, this is my fault. I always love you, mum and dad. Jason, Michelle, Joanne, I found peace. But the mystery only deepened when it was revealed after the investigation that the blood on Simon's hat didn't belong to either of the two boys. Now, who had taken their lives in such a remote and desolate place? The truth may never be known, but this is what the police speculated. They speculated that the boys had enough, which was quite obvious, and they planned their escape. So they stole the Datsun and they headed out to which where they thought would have led them off the property. Now, instead, they actually headed east, which headed them towards Hall's Creek. Now, this is where they would have ran out of fuel and then quickly realized that the trouble that they were in when the night became freezing and the heat became unbearable. So what it's speculated is then they've started to walk, which is where they've got 18 kilometers away. And from there, the police do not know what happened because they've ran into some type of trouble and from there a firearm was discharged and James ended up dead. Now is it that Simon managed to maybe get away in the scrub and only made it a kilometer after his adrenaline dumped and where he's etched into the bottle from passing out from heat exhaustion? We don't know but that's going to be the story of James and Simon. All right, let's get stuck into story number two.